Yes, yeah, so I'm from a community group up in the hills, uh, Yarra Ranges, sort of Kandinia area. Um, yes, I'm a qualified arborist, but we initially, after the June 9 storm event, I'm not sure whether everyone's aware of it, but probably most of you are, there was a massive, massive storm event right across Victoria. Um, there were approximately 25,000 trees that were blown over up within the Yarra Ranges and uh, Kardinia Shire. Um, I was part of a group of volunteers that were that leapt into volunteering. Um, we were supporting, make, doing a lot of make safe work, but supporting a lot of um, really vulnerable residents because clearly there were a lot of people out there with disabilities and sickness and 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 issues. Sorry, can you hear me now? Is that better? Um, so, the through the community work, we built a a, a network of volunteers. Um, we end up trying to reach out to the councils and different authorities to ask what was happening with the raw materials because we wanted to try repurpose them and uh, create a new program. Um, and that's where the idea of the concept of treasure in the trees came about. Um, it was initially through that uh, group of uh, volunteers and we set about creating um, or spreading awareness about sustainability. Uh, our underlying message is about educating primary school children and the greater community about sustainability and the links to environment, climate control and biodiversity. There's many layers to this program. Um, but educating, I've got three young children, 12, 10 and 5, and so through my... Sorry, I moved away from the microphone. Um, through my experiences as a, as a dad, one of my children is autistic, so... Uh, building these real-world pro projects for children just like my son Nicholas and, and, and other kids just like him it, it's been really, really important. Um, through the work, we've been clearly supporting a whole lot of vulnerable pe people throughout the community, working with different agencies. Um, yes, we played a really important part in, the, in supporting uh, the clean-up, but essentially we were building a pilot program. Oh, no. <laughs> Oops. Phew. Okay, so I'm not sure if anyone <laughs> ever got up to the hubs. Um, there were some big hubs set up around Calorama, Alinda, uh, St. Michael's Church and other um, wonderful establishments. This is a marquee set up by Yarra Rangers Council and some residents up at Calorama Oval. We played a part whilst a lot of crews were out there uh, clearly heavily invested in supporting and um, doing make safe work and whatnot. Um, there were a lot of vulnerable residents who, because it was really cold and really wet at that time of year, 18 months, 16 months ago. Um, so we leased some trucks and bought some firewood and uh, red gun firewood and set up the logs for it in the front yard and got a whole lot of volunteers and locals involved in splitting it. And then we worked and uh, building, started building collaborations and stronger partnerships with um, good folk like the CFA and some of the um, smaller agencies supporting some of the vulnerable folk. This is a, an amazing lady uh, by the name of Beth who runs the St Michael's Church up in Calorama. Again, they played an, an enormous role in supporting the community um, in lots of different ways and shapes because uh, there, were, there were thousands, many thousands of people really traumatised by what happened uh, with those trees landing on the properties. Um, and whilst we were delivering firewood, we were then asked to resupply a lot of the generators with fuel, and then we were doing food runs and then beanies and hats and all sorts of things. So just through this, because there was a reach, as I mentioned before, there were a hell of a lot of vulnerable people out there who had no access, and, and the elderly were especially stoic, and they, and they said, oh, no, there's always someone worse off than us, but um, clearly they were the people that really need support you know, a couple of weeks after the storm event. Here's just a couple of examples of, um, there was some tremendous damage up in the hills, um, but this is a property in Lilydale on the right-hand side, um, and there's a couple of photos of uh, Wandon. So, Treasury of Trees is, is clearly is all about spreading awareness about sustainability and everything I mentioned before, but we want to set up practical solutions by repurposing the raw materials from the storm event. And so we've now built partnerships with 14 primary schools up in the hills. Um, 
and these are some of the logos of these schools. We were aiming initially for 20 primary school projects, but now we believe it's going to be much bigger than that. It's a tedious process to, you know, dealing with um, local government, state government, creating new policies and writing documents and insurance and whatnot. It's, it's you know, you, you almost, not only do you have to be passionate, you've got to become obsessed. And that's what it was for us. But, you know, the, the response with these children, the teachers, the parents' associations um, is absolutely mind-blowing. And, you know, we know that we're doing something really special as well as that, we're working on various community projects with artists and sculptors. Um, we, we helped build a domestic violence memorial at Japara House in Kilsyth with another community group. Um, we've got a processing site. Initially, we had a storage site in Yellumbo, but now we've moved to Packham, sort of Jimbrook area. Uh, we've got at least a couple of thousand logs there. Um, more coming all the time. Uh, We've got plant, oh, we just leased the property uh, factory in uh, Lilydale, and that's going to be our factory showroom. So in 12th or mid-November, we're setting up a launch event where we will invite all the stakeholders and all the supporters to our program to come along and we can showcase the work and what we're doing with the artists and sculptors and, and whatnot. But then it's open for the next two or three weeks to the general public. So if anyone's just interested, you can come along and see what we're doing. This is an example of one of the artists. This is actually a painting. And at, the very, at this very moment, we've got a beautiful blackwood slab that we just pulled out of a kiln, uh, amongst many others, approximately a week ago. And one of the uh, local arborists in Alinda, who was also clearly impacted by the storm event, is painting um, several murals of locals on, on, on our slabs. A lot of, uh, as I mentioned a minute ago, a lot of hard work into building relationships with the different stakeholders. You know, Disaster Relief of Australia, Habitat for Humanity, Yarra Rangers Council, Cadinia Council, Anglicare, Windermere. You know, there's some of the they do some of the best work, um, and and many others. And then we set about salvaging materials. Uh, we didn't have any funds. I think we had one dollar in the bank. It was um, everything initially was done out of our own pockets because we understood the need and we had a vision and a purpose and we just had to build momentum and, and get it going. Uh, it wasn't easy, it wasn't easy. Um, but I must also say that the people who donated these materials, a lot of them held onto them because they realised they had really special logs, some blackwood especially. And uh, that photograph a minute ago on the left hand side was donated by this amazing gentleman who, who's spent the last 20 something years in a wheelchair but he's got the best spirit of anyone I've ever met and he said Dave we've been holding this onto this for maybe nine or ten months by the time I met him um, and he said we, we always believed it would go to something special and um, that log alone is probably going to help build three or four or five or six indoor uh, featured display cabinets in primary schools amongst other things. Been a hell of a lot of hard work. Uh, photograph left-hand side. I mean, a lot of clearly everyone in the game has seen lots of photos like this, or but images like this. But the bottom photo, bottom left-hand side photograph was um, down at Mil uh, Sylvan Reservoir, and they were donated amongst many others from the Melbourne Water Authority. Now all these logs were about to be cut up and sent off for firewood, and we were able to establish a relationship pretty quickly. Um, and they've been amazing supporters of our program. But again, you know, just the transport, and you can imagine the cost, you know, and, and, and nobody, in the beginning, we had nothing. We had nothing, and um, we knew that we had to keep building momentum, but it was really important that we built strong relationships along the way and, you know, credibility and trust with all the, all the people that were supporting us. And, um, and so it's... I think I'm smiling there. Yeah, I'm smiling there because um, some of our amazing logs we were just about to mill and send uh, straight into a kiln because we have a program that's just been funded. We had, with, along with another community group, $659,000 in grant funding a couple of months ago. That, that has enabled us to set up our program, lease the properties um, and build our five first, first five primary school projects, which is pretty amazing. A um, couple of different photos, uh, and this is, we show this often to community groups, um, 
where I went into the Sylvan Reservoir area and went and numbered all the logs. As you can see, there's numbers 523 or something on the left-hand side. I think we got up to seven, eight, or seven or 800 in that um, pipeline area alone. And then we had a lot of um, logs stacked in one of the storage sites, the Yarraja Council storage sites. Now, again, a lot of contractors would have been involved in a lot of the work up there. Um, but we set about trying to salvage a portion so that we could build our um, amazing projects. Part of what we do is salvage habitat logs. Um, we support especially the smaller um, rescue centres because they don't have anything. A lot of families, they do it from home. They do it out of their own pocket. So um, when we got a call, can you bring some smaller materials in? Of course, I say yes. I struggle to say no. Um, and now we're, we're reaching a stage where because of the funding and the support that we've got, we're able to start sal um, salvaging larger habitat logs and we're building really strong connections with um, some, some fantastic people. Oh, sorry, that's another example of something we salvaged last week. Um, we'll, we'll go to one of the Wombat Rescue Sanctuaries and uh, this particular lady, these are the parents. Um, there's, I think she's got about 12 wombats that have been rescued um, up around Wandering area. Most of them um, have been, a lot of them have been uh, rescued out of their mother's pouches because they've been hit by cars. So um, yeah, they need all the support they can get. And so, uh, as I said before, building the program, setting up all the documentation, getting council approval is, is not easy. But then we started to get our hands dirty. Um, that photograph on the right is part of the log that I've just mentioned before, but from um, Anthony, the, the fantastic guy in the wheelchair who donated it. Um, the photograph on the left is our first 58 or 60 odd blackwood slabs going into the kiln. Um, so we were pretty excited. Um, photograph on the right is um, what they looked like when they came out of the kiln and it was like Christmas Day to me. Um, this is a photo taken last week in our factory, uh, factory, sh factory slash showroom in Lilydale. Um, you know, we, we're working on multiple projects. We're working with artists, we're working with sculptors, we're working with craftsmen um, to showcase what can, what can be done when you repurpose these raw, raw materials. Um, and so again, I'd encourage anyone who's interested to come along in approximately a month or just over to come and see what these amazing folk can do. Um, another one of our supporters um, repurposing some of these raw materials which would have been normally cut up or thrown into a fireplace. Um, making pens and nutcrackers and shavers and all sorts of things with some of those, uh, yeah, what might have been seen as waste materials. And here's just a couple of photographs of say, our sustainable garden projects. So the bottom left hand corner is some sugar gum logs made into uh, some, a sand pit um, which you know, it was mind blowing for the for primary kids, primary school children. An example of a messmate um, fire fire um, shelter at, at up in Sylvan. Um, that's a couple of photos of the Blackwood slab I milled up in um, Calorama, and again some photos of some stakes and posts and whatnot that um, we've been able to process recently. Um, I must I just remembered my good friend over here, Alan Longhausen, who's a secretary of Treasure Net Trees is also part of the Rotary Clubs and Rotary uh, supported our program back in March with approximately $38,000 in funding to buy a uh, Lucas Mill and some a couple of big saws to get us going. So good on you, Alan. Keep it going. Um, again, just a couple of examples of primary school projects. Uh, yarning circles, uh, kitchen gardens, seating, just repurposing the timber. And something as simple as this. Now, I've got a five-year-old little girl and um, there's probably nothing I could build in the world that would make her more happy than this. Something as simple as this. But preps and ones and twos and anyone's got little kids like this will understand the value in something so simple. But the messaging and the learnings out of this goes a long way. Again, something really simple. A fallen branch, cut up and make a little cubby house. Probably a lot of people have done this, but you know, these little kids, that was in COVID. Um, when I knocked that together and these essential worker children played in that every day for about uh, four weeks. 
And again, just a really simple example of some discs that you turn into an adventure trail and the children get lost and they love winding around, winding around and winding around. And then, you can, of course, you plan up around that. So, you know, you can develop, develop that into anything. Yeah, a couple of uh, more examples of um, a project that we built at my children's primary school, St. James, uh, down in Melbourne. And that particular um, school project won a, well, we won an Australia Day Award back in uh, February or March this year for an environmental community award, which was really good for the kids, you know, because they get a little buzz out of that um, sense of ownership and a lot of pride. And that's a recent, what we'll call a walk and talk at Emerald Primary School, where we're just spreading awareness and um, bouncing ideas off the kids, and the kids are super excited. Uh, and the principal's on the left and one of the teachers, and it's a council um, member on the right. So, you know, we're building all these collaborations, all these relationships, working together. It's vitally important. And we have, a, we have a, an environmental filmmaker who's following me around, or following us around, uh, capturing the story. This is a whole lot of learnings out of it. And here is a two or three minute video, um, sort of like a campaign video that will showcase what we're trying to do. And, um, and so, check it out. June 9, 2021, there was a massive storm event right around Victoria, but affected us dramatically here in the hills and Yarra Ranges area. Approximately 25,000 trees were blown over and the whole community were watching truckloads of logs leave in the hills and ranges. Most people live here because of the connection to nature and their love of trees. And so everyone had this, this gut feel that they did not want the logwood just to be cut up into firewood. We started asking the authorities, is there a chance that we could salvage a portion to build primary school and community projects? And that's how Treasure Now Tree started. The underlying message with Treasure Now Trees is to spread awareness about sustainability. By creating these real world projects for primary school children, for example, we set up land-based educational playgrounds where they learn about sustainability, the connection to the environment. We really have to focus on setting examples for the children because they're our sustainability worries of the future. Previous example of a sustainability project that I've worked on was at St. James Primary School back in Melbourne. So there was a real focus by the leadership team to try to create an, an outdoor space where children were able to almost escape into these adventure playgrounds and build their bush cubby houses, be involved in the, the nurturing and the care of the kitchen gardens, teaching them, educating them, providing environments and some materials for them to really ignite their imagination, which is incredibly powerful for the mental health and wellbeing. It just takes that traditional classroom learning, that traditional space, and it flips it. And it's so lovely that we can be out in this sort of space, learning in a different environment in a different way. Now up here, up in the hills and ranges, we've got an amazing opportunity to create these new projects. I mean, we're aiming for 20 primary school projects or more, and probably 15 or 20 community projects where we're utilising these raw materials. To be able to have the children outdoors and providing, doing their learning outside while getting a greater understanding of the, their environment around them it just adds those multiple layers to the education. Having that message at school, bringing it then to home to develop that discussion and conversation and education because they're our future. And if we can help cultivate that and facilitate that discussion, that learning, then it, the, it continues. We've worked tirelessly to build this program. We've now found our, a new processing site because our program keeps evolving. We will be able to sort the materials properly now, mill our larger logs and start setting them aside for our primary school projects. That's something we're really, really excited about. To be able to achieve these short to midterm goals, purchasing our plant equipment, locking in our processing sites, we need support and we need funding. By funding this project, you'll enable us to create a program where a portion of these 25,000 trees are repurposed for these amazing projects. And the teachers and the learnings that are gonna come out of this will go on for decades to come. Our team at Treasuring Our Trees are really, really proud of strengthening the community, improving mental health and wellbeing, and creating a culture around caring for the planet. So uh, 
That's a bit of a snapshot of um, what we're up to so far. We're uh, just about to build a, um, sorry, launch our website. We've got several short videos that we're working on at the moment, but this is part of a much bigger story um, that we believe will be shared right across Australia, our program. We're already getting requests for um, information about how we set it up and what we're doing uh, right around Victoria. Um, this event, the most of the materials that were salvaged from this was a storm event, clearly, but um, we have some bushfire uh, materials coming to us, uh, I think, this week. And so it's, our, our program's a lot bigger. We're working, we've, we've established fantastic relationships with bushfire recovery, Melbourne Water, uh, with the John Lings group, with the massive contractors up there, um, Yarra Rangers Council, Cadenia Council. The, as, as we speak, the Department of Transport um, and even the Level Crossing Rail Upgrade Project, uh, who have just donated approximately 50 tonne of red gum logs to our program. So we're looking to, uh, to do something really special with those materials. That's it for me. Any questions? Very, very good question. Um, we've built some really good friendships with most, pe most people, most, most authorities. And Mick Stormer and the boys at Vic Forest are part of our group. Yep. They love what we're doing. Um, clearly, we have come across even some materials at um, Sylvan Reservoir at the moment around the front and feel like we're competing for some of those logs. Vic Forest is, is in there and they'll be picking the pieces out of, um, picking the eyes out of most of those logs. But no, they, they understand the, the bigger vision, the, the purpose of what we're trying to do. But um, as we are evolving and we're, we're getting some runs on the board, um, we believe that they'll, be, they'll play a part in supporting us in the future. In fact, they said that they would. Thank you, mate. Great question. We just, we've got a, a question for the recording, Dave. Sorry? Yeah, yeah, sorry, the question was where can we donate? So we're just about to launch our website and everything's just been a massive task, uh, so many steps along the way, but we're hoping to launch within the next couple of days. Um, part of, on our website, and by the way, everyone, um, our Facebook group page, it's the only way of uh, being able to advertise our work is Treasuring Our Trees. Um, it was a private group initially because we were trying to build and manage the, the, the program as we went. Um, but we're just about to launch the website and set up you know, social media platforms to, to share everywhere. Um, so on the new website, there's going to be a donation link. And that, that's a really important part of the program because we've got funding for the first five schools and we've got funding for, to, to set up the program and to list the properties. But, you know, the f six or seven or eight artists and sculptors who are working with us as we speak are donating their time for free for the first project. And what we're hoping to do is secure some funding to help them be involved in the school projects along the way. You know, and we've got 14, 15 schools on board and we're aiming for 20 schools. And we believe we're only just beginning. Okay, thank you, David. Thank you all. Thank you. Thanks, buddy.